Welcome to the Building Performance Workshop, guys. Today, we're going to talk about infrared cameras. Now, I have collected six infrared cameras, and I take them out to jobs. Uh, and I had a job this past week where I was doing 200 apartment scans over the course of three days. And I took several of these with me because, number one, I like to be prepared just in case, for example, my battery runs out uh, or the camera breaks down, something like that. Obviously, you want to be set for that. But also, I wanted to try out what is best for what use case. I have six different cameras here. Here, we have a $250 camera. And here we have a $25,000 camera. So I will describe what all of these do. And hopefully we'll get to a place where you understand a little bit more about what I now understand about how each of these has their strengths and has their weaknesses. Um, but you definitely want to select the right camera for the right job. So let's go ahead and start down here because this is where I want everybody to start in general. In my opinion, every single person uh, who is interested in knowing anything about buildings should have at least a $250 camera. So this is a camera that hooks onto my cell phone. This is my iPhone 5. This is called the FLIR 1. Now they have upgraded their uh, more recent generations of this. Just plug in to the bottom of your phone and it can be an Android or uh, an iPhone, it doesn't matter. This one though, is uh, paired specifically to my iPhone. And I specifically do not upgrade my iPhone because of this machine. This is not the, the little one that plugs in at the bottom, which means that I can literally have this live on my iPhone all the time. I carry this with me 24 hours a day. That is very useful to me. There's a, a photographer who said that the best camera is the one that she happens to have on her, which is why she prefers using an iPhone. Um, and I believe the same thing. If you're not, if you don't have something to take a picture there, or if you're on an airplane and you're talking to somebody about what you do for a living and you can whip out an infrared camera and start pointing it at things in an airplane, that's amazing. So what do you get for $250? Not a whole lot. That being said, this does have thousands of infrared thermometers inside of it. That's what all these infrared imagers do. They are looking at radiation of heat from surfaces. And that means that they have to have an array of infrared thermometers, those little things that cost 50 bucks or whatever, that you can point at a wall and it points a little laser at it and tells you what the temperature is. This has thousands of those embedded inside of it. So that is pretty impressive. Now, obviously, once we get up to the $25,000 end of the table over here, you're gonna have a ton more sensors inside of the machine, along with other bells and whistles. But for right now, we're just gonna talk about um, non nerdy metrics of this stuff. This has quite a lot. So for 250 bucks or for 400 bucks, which is the pro version, uh, get, just get it. Don't even think twice. Uh, any tool that's cost less than 500 bucks, just buy. If you're a professional like I am, you need tools like this, especially if they're in your pocket. So uh, this kind of imager takes two pictures. All FLIR imagers take what's called MSX, which is uh, the infrared image and also the photo image. And you can actually slide from one to the other, or you can have both of them overlaid. And you can actually now in the newer version of this app, you can adjust the uh, distance that it is assuming the object that you're looking at is from the camera. And so you can actually tune the infrared image to the digital image so that all of the profile edges and the silhouettes line up perfectly. That's kind of a cool feature. Um, also, because it's on a phone, the software can be updated endlessly. You only have just a piece of hardware that's pretty good, and then you can do whatever you want with the software. That's neat. Okay, so next in line is a $700 piece of equipment. This is called the FLIR C2, um, and this is a non-hooked-to-your-cell-phone piece of equipment. Why would I want this? First of all, I like that in my pocket because I, it's attached to my phone. I can upload to Instagram in seconds if I take a picture. So this is perfect for social media and for explaining to people. Also, I carry with me all the time. I am not gonna carry this in my pocket, but I am not gonna give this to my client to walk around independent of me within the building because this has my cell phone hooked on it. So I am going to give them this because this can be dropped. Uh, it has a little lanyard. I can put it over their head and they can walk around and be not so gentle with it. It only costs 700 bucks and this keeps them 
no offense to my clients, but it keeps them away from me so that I can do my job and not worry about multitasking and explaining things. So again, you have the MSX digital image overlaid with the infrared. It has uh, a few more sensors, I believe, than the FLIR 1. Um, don't quote me on that. But it is uh, rugged, and it's built for going out on site and using independently of your cell phone. That is what its strength is. Now, in the same price range, we have this. This is called the FLIR MR160. This is two devices in one. This is both an infrared imager, and you can see that the infrared image that you're getting is not super clear. Uh, as an infrared imager, this is not very good. But that is not what it's built to do. It's not for taking pictures to show your clients. It's for finding moisture and then uh, determining whether you actually have a moisture problem or not with a contact sensor. So this is a moisture meter and an infrared camera. So all you have to do is step into a room, do a quick scan with it, and then pinpoint where you see blue areas, walk over to it, put it down, and it will tell you whether it is in fact wet or not. The MR60 is a preferred moisture meter in my kit though for one reason, which is that it has a pin uh, connector so that we can do material testing uh, in a construction environment. So when we have exposed stuff that I'm okay to put a hole in, I can simply do this and get a reading of what the content of the particular material is. When I'm in somebody's house, I generally don't wanna be sticking this into their walls and ceiling uh, because it'll leave little marks. So that's why the contact meter on the back is really helpful, but this also works on different types of materials if you're able to get into a building while you're under construction, which is when I prefer to be there, and to really find out in something that looks damaged and rotting whether it is actually still wet. When you're doing infrared scans, you have signatures for insulation deficiency, you have signature for air leakage, you have signature for water. All of these things are look different, you wanna verify what it is. If your job is to find moisture leaks, you wanna make sure that you are verifying the moisture leaks. Don't take a picture of something and say, oh yeah, that's a water leak or a roof leak. That it will get you in big trouble if you haven't actually verified it with a moisture meter. So you can either have what I carry around with me most of the time, an infrared imager and a moisture meter, or you can have one piece of equipment that's not very good at infrared, but it is a pretty solid moisture meter. Now that being said, I carried around this past week, part of my job was to carry a moisture meter with me. I had two. I had also a Tramex MEP, which is about a $250 tool. Um, and I found that these two things disagreed with each other, which I don't really like. So I haven't done calibration testing on either of those pieces of equipment, but I like to just make sure if I'm not super comfortable with any one piece of equipment, I like to back it up with a second piece of equipment. And in some cases, uh, you can see things uh, with different infrared cameras that you can't see with others. And I'll get into that in just a second. So this also about a $700 purchase. This is called a Thermap. This is a, uh, originally a military application and it hooks onto a cell phone just like the uh, FLIR one. This one is more hardcore. This is a serious imager. You can see how big the actual casing is. So this hooks on, it's got a nice pistol grip and it only works with Android last time I checked. But this has a couple of cool features. Number one, I've got all of the images that I'm showing you uh, in the same palette, which is called Iron, just so that you can compare images. But this also does something called night vision. And what essentially the engineers of this tool have explained to me is that they can take the whole range of what the camera is reading and actually pop all of the temperatures out toward the extremes, so you get very black and very white so that you can see things a lot clearer. If you're looking for things like animals at night or if you're looking for people in your driveway, things like that, this can actually really help and it is kind of a cool feature. Um, second thing that it can do is stream live video. I have not gotten that to work, to be perfectly honest with you, but apparently that is something you can do. So you can be in somebody's attic and be having them watch what you're doing on their laptop if they have an internet connection that you also are on. So that is kind of a cool feature. Uh, I don't do a lot of that, that's why I have this, because I don't want to be explaining something at the same time as I'm doing it. Next in line is my $5,000 camera. This is a Fluke TIR-110. Apparently they don't make this model anymore, but I'm in love with it. Uh, this was an upgrade from the last one that I had, which uh, got stolen from my office. That was an insurance claim that I was not super happy about. Now the reason that I stuck with Fluke, and I don't get paid to endorse any of these companies, but this is my workhorse camera. 
even though it's $5,000, I have a $25,000 camera, which I will show you in a moment, but this thing uh, comes not only with the right amount of sensors, the right resolution, the right size, the right weight, the right look, all of the stuff that I like to be able to take into a professional situation, but also the reporting software that this camera uses is amazing for doing the kind of reports that I do, which are not super nerdy, super in-depth reports, uh, like what you would give on a huge commercial building where you're doing a roof inspection. This one, if I wanna give nine images per page with picture in picture, and you can see what that looks like with these images here, uh, this is the workhorse to be able to do that. So it has a simple removable SD card, which I love. It has a rechargeable battery, which you can remove right here and get uh, spares. I do not own a spare battery on this. This thing lasts a long time. I did this past week's uh, seven hour days with the, uh, all of the features that this has and I did not need to replace the battery in the middle of the day. So I was able to do seven hours solid with this thing. Uh, one of the other cool features of this is built-in lens cap. Sounds lame. Awesome, because I swear I'm gonna lose a lens cap if it's, if it's removable. I already lost the one for this one. Um, too bad on that. My $25,000 camera, I'm a lot more careful about. But this guy, it just really helps because you do want, just like I told you, I got punched in the face with a chainsaw, um, the, the chain end of it. Thank goodness I had put the sheath back on it because otherwise I would have gotten probably eaten up um, on my face. By the way, I did that to myself. Nobody else punched me in the face. But this thing, likewise, when you're moving around, as soon as you start doing something else, you wanna put this on because it's just gonna protect it. This is $5,000 and what you are paying $5,000 for is that thing right there, which you wanna protect from sticks and whatever else goes in there. Um, a bird could fly into your infrared imagery. So this thing uh, has adjustable focus. Like these do not have adjustable focus. These are all autofocus. Um, not such a big fan because if I wanna focus on something that is not what the camera thinks, I'm smarter than the camera is. I like to tell a camera what to do. Now, last in line, $25,000 camera. This is a FLIR T660. Removable lens cap. I wanna make sure to hang on to this. We can adjust how this works so that if I'm doing a roof scan like this, for example, I can be like this and not be bent over like this, which I would have to if I'm using this camera. Um, I can do straight up and be looking at it like this and not have to crane my neck back, all lovely features. I have a viewfinder if I want to look through this or I have a giant beautiful LCD screen that I can use and you can see the quality of this image is far superior to everybody else in this line. Pluses about this, removable batteries and we've got a spare battery as well so I can just plug this in. Uh, downside, boot time. This thing takes about 30 seconds to fully boot, so I need to make sure that I'm prepped before I have something that I wanna take a picture of. This guy, about 10 seconds. This thing, moisture meter, literally two or three seconds and it's booted up, I love it. Um, my FLIR 1 on my camera takes a little while. Uh, so that is something that you wanna consider when you're thinking about which tool to use for the job or which tool to purchase in some of your cases. Now. This can take great video. This camera is what we've been using for shooting video for the YouTube channel or for the television show uh, because it's a beautiful imager. Um, this is not a scientific piece of equipment which would require like a computer station to be coming around with us all the time. It's got built-in inboard recording capabilities. Uh, it's got manual focus and it's got autofocus, so you can have the best of both worlds. And it's able to uh, take very, very refined measurements. So the resolution on it and the range can be very, very tiny. If I have a day, and you'll see that I use this on the Obsessed Garage Channel's uh, analysis of Matt Mormon's house, I took this and I took this because it was a day where it was about 70 degrees outside and about 70 degrees inside. And if I have that kind of day, really none of these is gonna do any good except this guy right here because I've got a very, very small temperature gradient between the air that's coming in and the surface that it's interrupting or splashing on. So I wanna be able to see those very, very fine differences and this is the tool that you would use for that. Now, what is very interesting about this last week's job is that I took this piece of equipment, this piece of equipment, and this piece of equipment, $700, $5,000, $25,000. And what I ended up using a lot of the time was not the $25,000 camera. The $25,000 camera is beautiful and it's amazing, yes. But the field of view is very narrow. And if I'm doing work in homes, like for example, in an apartment building, which was my specific job, I am never more than 10 feet away from whatever it is I'm trying to scan. This guy, because the field of view is so narrow, it's, it's really good at if you're gonna be on the ground doing a roof scan, 
uh, of something that's 20 feet in the air, bam, this is your tool for that because you're not gonna see any of the small problems with this 20 feet in a way. But when you're really up close within an apartment, within a home, you need to be able to have a much wider field of vision and lower resolution because you're just not gonna have little tiny things happening far away from you. It's not gonna happen. So beautiful tool, not built for apartment scans. In fact, this guy, is ideal. Now, what I counseled my client to do is, yeah, you can hire a professional to come in with a really expensive piece of equipment that you really need to be able to know how to use. Or you could have your maintenance guy own one of these things and just go in regularly and scan the bathrooms. Once I did 50 of these 200 apartments, I knew what the problems were. And so now it just comes down to pinpointing which apartments have those same problems. That being said, there are some unique situations where, oh, there was a problem that didn't spring up a million times before, but most of your problems in buildings are gonna be very consistent. They were built by the same people, they were designed by the same architect generally, so you're gonna have problems that are cropping up all over the same places in the same ways. So this tool was great. Now, that being said, sometimes I'd step into a bathroom and the leak would be so small that I could only see it with this piece of equipment and I could not see it with this. So there are limitations here, but you can see that just because something is more expensive does not mean that it's better. In fact, there's some things you can do with the cheapest camera on this table that you cannot do with the most expensive one. I would never carry this on my person uh, when I'm not working, right? This one I'm definitely gonna do. This guy is perfect. Am I going on a big commercial building? I'm not taking any of the rest of these pieces of equipment. I'm only taking this guy. So depending on what you are doing, you need to be able to have a tool that fits the job. Now, um, like I said, this guy is my workhorse. I take it everywhere with me. So if you're gonna just buy one piece of equipment, in my opinion, it's a $5,000 imager that has a nice field of view, you know, not 15 degrees, but it doesn't need lenses. Like I don't need to buy a zoom lens or a wide angle lens for it like this. Uh, it records easily on SD cards. It has a good software that you can report with because if you're giving people, if you're printing out hard copy reports and they have two images per page, you're gonna come out with like 50 or 60 page reports, which is what I was creating when I first had my uh, first FLIR camera, and that doesn't work very well. I like to have nine images per page, then I can give somebody a 10 page report, and I've got 90 images on there, that is amazing. And then I can blow them up later if I want to. So, I hope that this has helped illuminate some of the work of infrared scans, uh, infrared thermal photography, that's what I like to call it. So uh, if you have questions or if you have comments on any of these cameras or cameras that you use, please post them in the comments below. Go ahead and reach out uh, through my website. If you want to know more about any of this stuff, obviously we train on this. Uh, I do not carry inventory. I don't sell any of these things. If you want to buy some stuff, go to True Tech Tools and um, talk to those guys because they know a lot about all these types of equipment. So please subscribe to the channel. Please reach out. Please comment, like, etc. Have a good holidays. Talk to you later.